People and Earth brings you environmentally aware and active individuals or organizations and what they do for Mother Earth. One of the things they do, one of the ways they show appreciation for the home we have on Earth is recycling, which brings us to today's guest. Recognized and merited for her achievements, listed in Gumi Guru's 50 Under 30 Young Leaders Class of 2021. She has served the youngest board member of Zimbabwe, Applied Arts and Crafts Association, and voted Entrepreneur of the Month by Fashionomics Africa in Court d'Ivoire, and more achievements to her name. Gladys Chiwanda, welcome to People and Earth. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. So kindly tell us how you got into recycling of the different materials that you use for your products in Crafts Inc. For me, um, the easiest thing that you can do with fabric when it's old and it's tattered, usually as a moment, we turn it into a rag or chikorobo. So um, I would see that, that whenever our t-shirts were torn, they would be used for things like that. We didn't have like decent ways of giving fabric a new life. So when the African print started trending, there was so much offcuts of African print material, of which at that time it was quite expensive to access this, the piece, like the six meters of African print. So having access to so many pieces of fabric that were going to either be burnt or going to be thrown into in the trash, I had to do something with the pieces. And that's how I came up with the brand Crafted Dink, which focuses on recycling pieces of African print material into making amazing notebooks, gift packaging, and boxes for people who want to use them for to enhance the customer experience, as gifting for their clients, as well as sharing amongst each other. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, that is very creative of you. I mean, even you thinking about that idea of having to collect all these materials and put something together as a beautiful end product. That's amazing. Well done to you. Thank you so much. Do you have any emo emotional motivations? I, I think I do. Um, uh, maybe we spoke about it when my father was a fine artist but he never made a living out of it. So there was so much stereotype around it. So I took it upon myself to prove to everyone that you can make a living out of art. And um, for the five years that I've been working on this project, I've never been employed. I've only done um, consultancy work. So I'm proving that uh, it works and someone can actually take a career in creative arts and make something out of it. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, at least you weren't discouraged in terms of what other people thought. And how does your father feel when he sees like you exploring this? Unfortunately, he passed away when I was very young. So there are so many stories that has, have been passed to, down to me through oral tradition. I've been told stories about the great th stuff my father used to draw, design, paint and um, one of his favorite hobbies was merchandising so you would get hired by big stores to just decorate the window so he was the person that they would call if they wanted to come up with uh, a new set design so he was that person so I grew up wanting to connect with him through the things that he loved to do. Wow amazing I'm sure he's proud of you today. So if you wanted to do something similar in terms of the recycling, what would it be? Fashion. Okay. Yeah, so I've been tr trying, doing my bit, and using the thrifted denim jackets and just giving them a new flair when it comes to fashion. So I collect those, piece, uh, those denim jackets, add some bit of African printed materials there, and um, the response has been quite good, especially for men. So they don't like too much African print, but they like wearing it. So maybe a dash of African print somewhere, it will connect with their roots, or it makes them feel like they're connected to their African um, um, ethnicity. So 
I've been trying putting my hands in fashion. That's amazing. I mean, you took off this integrating, you know, modern and obviously with your pieces. So tell us, what is the process of it all when you're doing something from start to finish? So uh, because I'm working with clients, there is a lot of co-creation that happens when you're making the products. So the first thing that a person tells me is what they want to give because most of our products are used as gifting. So we look into the personality of the person that is going to be given this gift and what would they like. People have got different preferences when it comes to color and uh, African print can be a little bit too much. So we, when we then assess the type of personality this person is, we have to sit down and co-create with this person what would their preferences be like? Do they like the quieter tones or the dark or the most vibrant of the, the prints? And then that's what we, helps us choose the right material. And then because we are not buying material, we're collecting. So we are selecting from the available options that we have. But we also have customers like the, the corporates, they want uniformity. So we then had to look into buying our own fabric as well as printing our own material. And uh, when we then use this um, custom approach uh, to, to our production, we then create more intimacy with our clients. That is amazing and it is creating a great experience with your clients having a relationship with them too. Yes. So tell us, um, with your um, work is it only limited to african prints only so uh, recently i found myself doing packaging design so mostly um cli uh, zimbabweans have become entrepreneurs most of them run small businesses but they're getting challenges with finding the right packaging so they end up just buying gift bags small little plastics they're also not sustainable and then also they do not really give the customer experience that you're trying to give. So I'm also a graphic designer. So part of, I, I'm so drawn to packaging. So I found myself designing a couple of packaging designs and printing and actually making the packaging using our already existing craft skills. So we have diversified into packaging and um, it's mostly paper packaging. All right, so I'm going to hold you right there and we're going to take a sh commercial break. Okay. So we're going to take a commercial break and we'll be right back. Hi guys, and we're back. We were talking with Gladys and she was telling us about the packaging. Gladys, please kindly share with us about the eco-friendly fabrics, how they affect the environment. Whenever someone gets into the cutting room to design a piece of clothing, 15% of that material is counted as waste. So imagine how many wastes uh, do we have when it comes to fabric. And fashion, newness is the thing, so we are consistently making so much fabric. And those offcuts are ending up in toilets, in our sewers, in our blocking our drainages. So because we don't have like a proper way to discard fabric, it ends up in places that we do not want. And also, fabric is one of the major, num major contributors to landfills. So they fill up lands because we cannot uh, dispose fabric. And also, uh, the, the inks that are used to make fabric are potentially harmful to the environment. So we, uh, when we are, protecting or giving fabric a new life, we are extending its lifeline so that it doesn't go to the landfills quicker. So what we're trying to do is to uh, preserve the fabric so that it doesn't dis uh, get disposed. So if someone is, has our notebook, they will hardly throw it away because it's so unique and it's crafty. So they will end up collecting just the notebooks and keep them in their bookshelf. If they have bought our gift bag, they are going to reuse the gift bag because it's very durable with the fabric that is supporting the bag. So they will end up do more, doing more things with our bags that we have made using the, the collected fabric. Yeah, very interesting. So how are you safeguarding all of this when it comes to making your own materials? 
So we do have challenges with the tailors. Um, when you're collecting, they do not make sure that they are putting it in this clean, safe place. We are going to collect. Sometimes they just cut and put it on the floor. So that it's highly likely that you find them dirty. And you have to go through the process of disposing them through the bin or just burning them, which is not ideal. However, we've managed to create a network of tailors that we go to and collect every now and then. Sometimes they call us that, oh, right now we've got this type of fabrics. Are uh, you able to come and collect? So we also hardly collect the plain ones. We want the color, the pop. So that's how we've been managing to safeguard. And also looking at um, when you're buying fabric, they are now more eco-friendly fabrics available, they are biodegradable. So it means that if they're thrown, they are thrown out, they, uh, they can disintegrate. And also they are, fab however, they're quite expensive. So we are now, so they will be uh, available for exclusive clients who understand what we are doing and they're willing to pay more for them. Hmm. So Gladys, um, tell us about the Tony Elumelu magazine interview that you had and um, what achievements have you achieved after that? So the Tony Elumelu Foundation magazine feature was a follow-up from the 2019 alumni ship I had with them. So I happened to meet someone who said, oh, you should apply for the foundation. It's good for your business. So I applied blindly. You know, there's so many scams online. So you, you're very skeptical about applying for anything. I did, I got a response via text that I managed to get into the next level. But I didn't know I was gonna commit my whole year doing what they wanted me to do. But it was basically improving my skill set as a business woman and considering that all my skills in business are sort of coming from the streets and you're making mistakes every day and you're learning from them. So it was a good opportunity for me to learn so they were celebrating sustainability and um, they remembered that I was one of the people that they had in 2019 as an alumni and um, I'm also practicing uh, sustainable um, and also trying to put my mark in, the, in sustainability. And um, in 2017, I was one of the CBZ YEP uh, finalists and um, I just shortly after that, Delta nominated me for a Make a Difference Award. It was an honorary, honorary award to celebrate my influence in recycling our fabric. And um, in 2018, I was the Young Business Leader of the Year. And um, in 20, I think I guess, in 2022, I was a top entrepreneur, 30 under 30. And uh, there's so much that has been happening, uh, so many features around the world, which has helped me boost um, my brand and also give me um, an opportunity to meet customers, networks and partners that I've been working with over the years. Hmm. Wow, look at you, girl. <laughs> look at you. Wow, this is very impressive. And how does this make you feel? I can see you really glowing. <laughs> so it makes me feel validated that that path that I chose to to move and it's it's working as well as um, just saying that. Uh, so uh, when someone was saying that you shouldn't pursue this, uh, and then I did and look what's happening. So it's validation and then also it's saving as inspiration to other entrepreneurs or young people who want to pursue business. They could be frustrated and they are looking at ways of putting a mark in the world and they, they don't have those ways and they, they want to pursue school but they, they have no opportunity to that. So maybe they can just look around what their environment, what can they do, and they can turn it into a business. Hmm, that's very good. So are you open to working with uh, young people? 
Um, I'm working with, op working, I'm open to working with young people. I've been part of organizations that allow me to exercise that. Um, part of ZYE, it's a, it's a platform for young entrepreneurs who are looking into expanding and growing their businesses. And um, I've been doing the Tony Elumelu application drive, just encouraging other people that this is a great opportunity for funding. So you can apply and also be like me. <laughs> and wow. yes, and then also um, when I was working, uh, when I'm working with the 8 to 5 Innovation Hub, I get the opportunity to meet other business people. We can discuss, grow each other and help each other. Sometimes I involuntarily mentoring others. <laughs> I d I'm not aware that I'm actually mentoring them. Then the feedback, that's when I hear, oh, okay. So that's how you view me. So it's, um, it's been like that. And I'm really happy to do it. I, I feel like I get charged up whenever I am doing that. I get calls whenever someone wants to start a new business. Hi Gladys, I want to start a new business. I want you to be my partner. No, I don't want to be a partner. But what do you need as help to start? So that's, that's basically how I am. All right. Wow, this is excellent. I mean, hearing you talk about this passionately is amazing and about growth with others. That's the key thing. We're going to take another short commercial break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Gladys, it was amazing listening to you talk about your projects passionately and about helping other people. So tell us, what sort of impact has your creativity had on society? Um, I wouldn't want to blow the horn, but um, I, I, I think I've worked mostly with young people who are trying to find themselves, um, who also maybe connect with me uh, with the fact that when I wanted to pursue university, I, couldn't, I was not able. So. Um, Young people that have left high school, they do not know where to start from. and But they've got an interest in creative uh, stuff. So I found myself working with them uh, with, at the business. Uh, so And then also uh, getting an opportunity to clean. Taking the trash that no one is ready to, or no, no one even thinks about. Um, you are taking out or and then um, making a creative like elevating the creative industry that's those are some of the things that I feel that has been the impact that I have made mm. Wow amazing so when you look at other products and stuff based on your capability of making the notebooks the gift bags and um, book covers and things like that how does it make you feel looking at other products that are not eco-friendly? The way the world is going, sometimes you feel like they do not stand the chance in the future. And um, already we are importing a lot of things here in Zimbabwe. We do not have our natural resources that we are using in terms of production. So it's going to impact in terms of pricing. Uh, and um, it's not going to be favorable for the consumers for to buy. So if you're using local materials and um, trying as much as we can to save, you stand a chance uh, in having your business surviving, uh, especially in Zimbabwe. So in production, you have to cut as many costs if it means recycling, reusing, and also making sure that you're using locally found resources which is something that we have been doing at the scale that we can afford. But I'm looking at those products, I, can, I think that they may not be able to stand a chance in the future when the resources are out and they still have to rely on imports. That definitely is an impact. So what would you um, say in terms of helping to, under well, for those people who don't understand, how would you make them understand? What would you say to them? We are still a bit far from understanding eco-friendliness. I guess people will still be worried about other major things. So to other people, it's just buying a notebook that's nice and gifting it to someone. 
But for others, it's going beyond the notebook and understanding that if I keep this notebook or when, whenever I get a notebook from Crafteding, I'm saving maybe a milli center or what, like even the tiniest impact on the environment. So um, educating, it's a lot of work, but we're working on it because in our notebooks comes a little knot saying that that is who we are, this is why we are doing it, and we are happy to have you become part of our journey. And um, we hope that everyone would be environmentally conscious and try as much as they can to do their bit in saving their environment. How much of an economic responsibility is recycling? So we're looking at climate change and um, the world is being impacted a lot by global warming. And the first person that gets impacted by global warming is the women because they're the ones that are dealing with dirty water, um, burst pipes, and they're the ones that are doing the farming, the subsistence farming that is the one that helps the family to thrive. So um, if we continue not taking care of the environment, we are escalating global warming. And when that happens, then people are going to go through the West, like not having proper sanitation, um, rains, and also we are a country that is very agricultural. So if there is no water, there's no rains, then people are going to die of hunger. So these are things that that's like the bigger picture. We are working towards reducing the effect of, of, of global warming in the world, but also at a country level. We, I'm looking at those issues that affect us, like poor sanitation, um, and then also the agricultural system, which is our main uh, focus as a country. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much for the enlightenment. I mean, this was really good. Thank you. For Do you have any parting words for us and our viewers? Um, I would want to say that um, taking care of our space um, allows us to help our grandchildren and all the future generations to come back home where they find a safe environment that they can live in. So imagine your great grandchild knowing that you were doing stuff to the place that they're living with. So in parting, I would say, let's take care of our space. It's the only home that we have. We're not going to go anywhere else and our children are gonna live here. So let's do our bit in cleaning the environment and keeping it safe. Thank you, Gladys, for joining us on the show. You certainly did enlighten us. So guys, Make sure you take care of your environment. Join us next week, same place, same time. Ciao.